Welcome to Taste of Life, an interactive travel series for the gourmet in us all. Today on our Epicurean Odyssey, we travel to new heights on the island of Jamaica. The allure of Jamaica isn't just in the lush peaks that capture your eye. It's in the warm hospitality of a culture that remembers how to relax in its surroundings. Crystalline beaches reflect the sun that embraces every visitor and beckons them to stay. Our featured resort today is the Sandals Negril Beach Resort and Spa. We'll talk to founder Butch Stewart, and Sandals executive chef Lee Goble will create a sumptuous seaside dish. It's a growing indulgence. Royal Jamaican Cigars Robert Gore shows us why the island's prestigious tobacco is sought after around the world. Then, come back with us to the beach, to Rock House, where executive chef Colin Taylor creates a new twist on a Jamaican classic. All this and more when Taste of Life returns. And welcome to Jamaica, the original Caribbean vacation destination. So many of the things that we associate with this Caribbean paradise were perfected here first. The rhythms, the infectious, relaxed lifestyle, and even the flavors. So join us on a taste of life jaunt through sunny Jamaica. Jamaica really is a fabulous island. I think we are truly blessed. The Lord really smiled upon us as a people, I must say. And as you say, we have sun, sand, and sea. That's wonderful. Come and experience, come and see, because there is a lot that you'll be able to experience if you're able to come and visit us. Our featured resort in Jamaica is in Negril, the luxurious Sandals Resort and Spa. Its cuisine is created by executive chef Lee Goebel, and the whole Sandals experience has been crafted by Sandals founder, Butch Stewart. It's paradise from any perspective in a prime location along the grill's famed Seven Mile Beach. But for all the exciting beach activity, Sandals maintains an intimate air, nestled in a palm grove that canopies out over the shimmering sands. And there's still more magic beneath the waves at Negril, one of Jamaica's top dive sites. After a day under the sea or splashing around the pool, the refined comfort of sandals restores your energy and reminds you a Jamaican holiday is about relaxation, too. It's a concept sandals has perfected. I couldn't tell the last day we've ever had anything close to a complaint coming out of this resort. Um, people, I see them crying at the entrance. They're leaving. I say, what's wrong? They don't want to go home, you know? That's, that's when you feel, well, you've, you've done your job well. So, you know, you take somebody here that probably doesn't like you that much. When you leave, she's in love with you. Stunning sunsets are just one evening pleasure at Sandals. Another is fine dining. And like the sunsets, no two dining experiences are the same. From formal and elegant to open air to wildly fun. If the atmosphere entertains, the flavors intrigue. Asian cuisine walks alongside spicy Jamaican dishes and tempting international menus that change constantly. It's an enormous challenge anticipating the tastes of guests who come from around the world, but they have a few things in common. One is an increasing desire for lighter food, simple dishes prepared with little fat and lots of fresh flavor. And another, of course, is a craving for all the flavors that are the hallmarks of a trip to the Caribbean. Sandals specializes in using locally produced ingredients that not only maximize freshness, but also make sure the simplest dishes have the exotic Jamaican flavors visitors are seeking. The catch of the day approach to everything from fish to fruit has an added bonus for sandal chefs, the opportunity for experimentation and creativity. Oh, the is good. You just yeah, get this. Fresh, fresh. Okay, where you get it from your farm? 
we're just trying to develop Caribbean cuisine. As I said, it's the wild west of cooking down here, so we're trying to give it some finesse and trying to give it some, bring it up. I mean, Caribbean cuisine is probably going to be one of the biggest next cuisines. It, people haven't really looked at it much or done much with it, so we're going to try and refine it a little bit, and, and, and that's what we're doing here now. So it's interesting. We try to give it a culinary twist. You know, people come down, come down to the Caribbean. I don't, you know, we're trying to give them not only a nice beach, we're trying to give them exciting food that they can, you know, remember, really. Executive chef Lee Goebel's layered Jamaican snapper is truly memorable. For a free copy of this exclusive recipe, visit our website or call us toll free. Chef Goebel starts by heating a skewer and searing a decorative pattern on the fresh snapper fillet. So the final dish is as appealing to the eye as it is to the palate. Now earlier I made a jerk sauce, um, which is down here in this wok here. This is country peppers, uh, sweet peppers, jerk spice. Here I'm going to add a little bit of butter, unsalted butter. I'm going to add my local jumbo shrimp. As I say, jerk spice, ginger, pepper, a scallion. You really need to marinate them for something like 24 hours. But I guess you can buy jerk spice nowadays in, um, in the little tubs. Shrimps is something we have plenty of down here. These are uh, 10 15s, which is the size. This is an extra large shrimp. Okay. I'll place that aside. Okay, so I'm adding some garlic here to my, my shrimps. My... I'll just toss them over. Very handy to keep a cloth, red hot here. Okay, I'm gonna add a julienne of carrot. Okay. I'll just toss those over. Now, Jamaica's famous for a number of things. Rum being one of those. Here I'm using a coconut rum. If I can get the top off. <laughs> right. Now basically I'm just gonna leave those shrimps now to simmer in a coconut rum for a while. Whilst that's happening, it gives me a chance to cook off my, my snapper. It smells great. Okay. Add a little bit of butter. Now I'm going to cook this presentation side down. Bar marks are going to get darker. And these I'm just going to pop in a little bit of like a jerk, dry jerk rub. Okay. So you have a wet, spicy um, jerk rub, and then we also have a, a dry one as well. So when we're dusting things like we're doing here. Now, obviously, as we know, fish takes no time at all to cook. This here is uh, callaloo. To say it's chopped. So basically, I'm doing a layered fish dish. I'm going to layer it with callaloo. This side already slightly seasoned earlier. Cooks pretty much the same as spinach. Here we have bami. Bami is cassava. It's compacted uh, into a cake. They don't take any time at all to cook. This is aki. Aki is a, a cross between a fruit and a vegetable, and it grows on a tree. It opens like a like a chestnut. Uh, it's poisonous in its state uh, until it's blanched. So this is blanched. <laughs> It takes very, very little cooking. I'm hardly even going to touch this. As I'm going to put a little bit of the garlic in here. So. Okay. 
Also, I'm just going to add some kong. I know I said ackee and saltfish. Saltfish is a, is, a, is a salted cod, but I'm using conch. So earlier, we just trimmed up the conch, and we malleted it, flattened it out, uh, really just to soften it up. Chef Goebel brings classical presentation to Jamaican flavors, and much of the effort of this dish is in bringing it all together, building a tower as a creative display for the ingredients in a landscape of island textures. Here's some of the jumbo shrimps I had earlier. I'm a little fan of cantaloupe melon. And Chef Gobel even designs a pastry palm tree for the dish as a finishing touch for a classical treatment of these truly Caribbean elements. Sammy, you notice it's a little bit one color, so I need to try and break up the color a little bit. OK, and voila, here is the finished dish. Uh, Snapple Melpoi Ala Lee down here in Jamaica. So come down, try it, you know, jump on the plane. I expect to see you all here soon. OK, thank you. After the break, the secrets of a great Jamaican cigar. <laughs> the rebirth of an old luxury. These days, cigars are as fashionable as they are flavorful. Cigars were historically reserved for older men in restricted rooms, but the torch has been passed to a younger set that's including more and more women. Royal Jamaican Cigars' Robert Gore takes us through the process from field to humidor. In Maypen, we are in the center of the largest cigar-growing tobacco, tobacco-growing area of the island. We have all our farms here, our curing sheds, and where we grow our tobacco, we, we ferment it, we cure it, we strip it, and we prepare it to manufacture handmade cigars. At present, we make three different brands. Royal Jamaica being our number one premium brand, which we've been making for over 50 years. We also have other brands such as Lord of Jamaica, which is a new product doing very well in North America now. And we have another brand called Alvaro Lopez, which we have just launched in the United States. In the field that you're seeing right now is tobacco that's been transplanted from a nursery. And this tobacco has been in this field for about four weeks. The period of time between when we plant the seed in the nursery bed and we transplant it to the field is about 60 days. And when it stays in the field for about three to four months, during which time we will reap the leaves gradually from the bottom up. That's two to three leaves at a time. Each tobacco tree will have about 40, anywhere from 26 to 40 leaves. That is what our Jamaican filler is that we put in our fine handmade cigars. The process of transforming a green tobacco leaf into a rich and aromatic cigar begins with the right ingredients. Filler blended together in secret recipes account for each type of cigar's unique character. Climate-controlled conditioning brings the filler to perfect moisture levels before it's ready to become a cigar. Wrappers have to be prepared, too. Main veins are removed from the velvety leaves that then divide into two halves that will be graded for color and become two wrappers. Prepared tobacco is issued to Royal Jamaica's Rollers, whose role in creating an excellent cigar is every bit as vital in the modern era as it has been in centuries past. This factory has a capacity of making eight million cigars per annum. We are presently doing about four, four and a half million. Each worker, or should I call them roller or buncher, is limited by the amount of cigars we give them to make. They are presently producing about 350 cigars per person per day. We limit them because of quality control and that we want to ensure that we give the market and the consumer the best possible product there is. 
Bound cigars are pressed to ensure the right shape and consistency. But then each cigar is rigorously tested for size and draw. And then comes the final touch, a wrapper that seals the rich scents and flavors of genuine Jamaican tradition for cigar lovers the world over. We maintain our quality and consistency of our blend by carrying two to three years stock of our raw materials, particularly our tobacco. Uh, we like to age our tobacco and we select it very carefully, crop by crop, to ensure that what a cigar that's made today is going to smoke the same way as a cigar that you bought from us two or three years ago. And the main way of doing that is having the tobacco to continue making a consistent product all the time. Full-bodied, aromatic, and I think that's what we have sought to achieve, and we are achieving that today with a high use of Jamaican filler. When Taste of Life returns, we head to the rocky cliffs at Negril and the Rock House restaurant with another unique Caribbean seafood dish. Our featured restaurant on the rocky shores at Negril is the Rock House with its enthusiastic executive chef, Colin Taylor. Rock House is in a unique position in more ways than one. Perched on Negril's famous rocks, the Rock House provides a dramatic and romantic dining experience. The cuisine at Rock House is just as close to nature as the restaurant itself. Naturally, an honored place on the menu is held by seafood that's island fresh year round, complemented by local island produce. The flavors and presentation are all Caribbean, but tradition is making way for some modern culinary twists. There's no reason why exciting island cuisine can't be healthy, too. Traditionally, there is an authenticity that comes with Jamaican cuisine. What I'm trying to do is not change it dramatically. What I want to do is accentuate it, make it lighter for the people who come down here, because it seems as if the majority of the foods that are prepared here are very heavy and weigh you down. But we, well, tourists, when they come down, they're not looking for heavy foods. They like lighter foods. It's taking the basic concept of Jamaican cuisine, which is uh, a diverse range to start off with. It has the Indians, it has the Spanish type of cooking, has East and West Indian. So I take that and I just try and expand it a little bit and try and uh, eliminate some of the heavier things, cut down on the oils and cut down all the starches and all that. Our Rock House specialty dish is a twist on an old classic, blackened Maui Maui with candy yams and a black bean papaya salsa. For a free copy of this exclusive recipe, visit our website or call us toll free. First of all, we have to have very hot frying pans for the mahi mahi and the candied yams. What I'm going to do is prepare them both at the same time, so try and keep up. I pour a little olive oil in the frying pan for the mahi mahi. Margarine and brown sugar to caramelize for the candied yams. What I'm going to do is dust the mahi-mahi in our Cajun spice, our blackening spice. Once there's an even coating of the blackening spice on the fish, I'll put it into the frying pan and start to sear it. Sides are seared evenly. Once the brown sugar and margarine start to caramelize, I'll add some lime juice to it.
Then I can place the yams in there and let them caramelize. going to get is a little bit of Jamaican brandy. Turn these yams one more time. Now, we have black and mahi-mahi with the Caribbean charisma, candied yams. And my own personal black bean and papaya salsa. This here is Rock House's famous black and mahi mahi candied yams, black bean and papaya salsa. Why don't you come on down and try some? Christopher Columbus described Jamaica to Queen Isabella as the fairest land his eyes had ever seen. Add to that the magnetizing rhythm of calypso and reggae, the spicy appeal of the cuisine, and that blinding Jamaican smile. It's a recipe for an unforgettable Caribbean adventure. I'm Catherine Blythe. See you next time on Taste of Life. Catherine Blythe's Wardrobe by Ross Meyer. Lincoln Navigator is the official vehicle of Taste of Life. We were guests of Sandals Negril Beach Resort and Spa. For free recipes and copies of favorite shows, visit our website or call us toll free.